Okay, great. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today on managing macOS with Intune. Today, you're joined by myself, Ricky Patel, head of pre-sales, coming from more of a technical delivery background, and now um, working within the pre-sales team, really engaging with our clients through pain points, challenges, and, and roadmap and exercises. And we're also joined today by David Brook. Hi, everybody. Um, as Ricky mentioned, I'm David Brook. Um, I'm a principal consultant at Cloud XP, uh, formerly of Power On Platforms. Um, so I'm glad to be helping out today uh, with this webinar on macOS. Um, currently a Microsoft MVP in the Microsoft Intune space. Thanks, David. So today's session will be covering why enterprise management is crucial, especially for organizations with mixed environments. We'll dive into demos showcasing macOS enrollment in Intune and explore how to configure macOS devices and deploy apps effectively. And finally, we'll wrap up with a Q&A session, so feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. As mentioned, you can submit your questions in the chat box at any time during the session, and we'll um, get to your um, questions towards the back end of the session. So, modern Mac OS management. The Mac OS landscape in enterprise settings has evolved significantly. Companies now need modern, scalable, and secure management solutions. This is where Microsoft Intune comes into play, helping organizations manage Mac OS alongside Windows and mobile devices in a unified way. Over the past years, Intune has made big strides in the macOS management. In 2020, we saw key integrations like Script Engine and support for Office, Defender, and Edge in the operating system. By 2021, we had Settings Catalog for more granular control and support for universal apps, catering for both Intel and app, app, Apple devices. In 2022, features like native DMG support and macOS update policies were introduced, making app deployments and updates much simpler. And looking into 2024, especially that kind of that first half so far, we've seen improvements like the agent-based PKG deployments and declarative device management for smoother updates and greater control. So finally, after much anticipation, Intune now fully supports macOS management. This is a game changer for many organizations that manage mixed environments for both macOS and Windows devices. You can now provide seamless, secure, and modern device management for macOS alongside your other platforms all through the same tool. Unified management means fewer tools, reduce complexity, and improve security. With Intune, you can manage all types of devices, such as Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android from one single platform. Security is another critical factor. By consolidating management, you ensure consistent enforcement of security policies across all devices. And from a cost perspective, this also reduces the burden on IT teams who no longer need to juggle multiple solutions. Why manage macOS with Microsoft Intune? Managing macOS with Intune offers clear advantages. Firstly, cloud, cloud management at scale with Microsoft's extensive support. You can pre-configure essential apps like Office, enforce security policies with Defender, and make use of single sign-on via ID, giving users a really frictionless experience. The key takeaway is that Intune offers a user-first management that's secure, productive, and reliable. And over to yourself, David. Thanks, Ricky. Um, so in this next section, we're going to talk a little bit about config and app deployments for macOS devices in Intune. So a lot of applications come in a PKG format or a DMG format, and it is possible to upload these directly into the Intune portal uh, and deploy these to your devices. There is also um, other solutions for when that doesn't work. You can deploy them via the scripts as well. Um, 
We can also look at platform SSO, which is relatively new to macOS devices, and it's been a game changer for myself personally um, in using a macOS device on a day-to-day -day basis to manage things like consent flows, etc. cetera. Um, we'll dig a little bit more into platform SSO uh, in the demo later on down the slides. Um, but for anybody managing macOS devices today, platform SSO is a game changer. In terms of app management, you can deploy apps um, uh, and updates easily through the Intune portal, um, and it's very easy to get them deployed um, to these devices. In terms of macOS update policies, there is a few things that we can do. So you've got your generic update policies, and we've also got declarative device management update policies where you specify um, Kind of like desired state configuration within Windows, you specify when you want a device to be on a certain version and DD, uh, DDM will make that happen. In terms of configuring devices, there is still a few things that Microsoft Intune doesn't do. Um, and that's where that Microsoft heavily lean on some of these community extensions with them creating blogs on these themselves as well so for in, uh, in terms of the update management side you can use extensions like nudge um, to encourage mac os, mac OS updates and the great thing about nudge is it's got multilingual support so it's great for global organizations we've also then got octary which is um it, it can provide a splash screen where you can also add your terms and conditions, some um, walkthrough slides on how people can use these devices once they're onboarded, the steps they need to take to get their device ready. And you can also configure Octary, uh, kind of like Windows Enrollment Status page, to wait for applications to be ready before the user then uses the device. Um, talking of apps, as we did previously, there is also an app, uh, a third-party solution called Monkey. Um, Monkey works with P uh, PKG and DNG files, and it's a great way to manage your app lifecycle using a third-party tool. You can also do things like your pre- and post-configuration scripts with Monkey. Um, and it just helps you take a different approach to your app management from these devices. One thing about Mac devices which um, isn't yet available is the um, Microsoft uh, Privilege Management Software, EPM. And when you elevate on a Mac, you can't elevate on a per app basis. You have to elevate the entire system. And there's a third party tool called Privileges, which can help you do that, where you will click an application that'll help you launch uh, as an admin for just in time admin tasks. There is another solution which may be better for organizations called admin by request, um, which allows you to do the consent flow on top of that, which privileges doesn't have built in. And for most organizations, um, in terms of managing these Mac devices, a lot of the admins are still Windows based um, and they're just starting to manage these devices to um, help diversify the workforce. Um, and to help with the configuration, there is a tool called iMazing Profile Editor. And for your configuration profiles, this is super great, not just because it works on a Mac and it gives you more options than Apple Configurator does, uh, and also third-party solutions, but you can also use it on a Windows device to manage your configuration profiles from there as well. So really helping you diversify yourself and not having to go get a Mac out of a cupboard to start managing these devices. We've then also got a solution called Xquids, which can help supercharge how you let your users log into these devices. So you can use things like Azure, Google Cloud, Okta, OpenID, and you can configure your login screen to use any of these solutions um, to help you get the best solution for your user experience for logging into these devices. In terms of the Microsoft Intune side, you can still then use things like the settings catalog, templates, remote actions um, to manage your devices as you would your Windows devices um, for configuration management.
So let's talk a little bit about policies and securities. Um, and guys, if there's any questions that you have, please feel free to use the Q&A and we will um, get to them um, towards the end of the slides. That will help give the most benefit to people at the end. So let's talk about securing these devices. So you can integrate your Mac OS devices with Microsoft Defender for endpoints. Now, the, the, you can publish the application very easily via Intune. There is a pre-configured um, option for that. The configuration um, is a bit long-winded, but once your device is configured and onboarded, it works seamlessly well, and you can configure your um, policies using the Microsoft Defender portal, or you can configure them using Microsoft Intune as you do for most other policies. Using Microsoft Defender as well also allows you to take use of the Purview DLP features and device control to prevent users from writing data to unauthorized USB devices. And then for locking down the, um, the flash drives again in these devices, um, we've got File Vault. Instead of BitLocker, we have File Vault for macOS. And this can be um, set up during the setup assistant, or you can configure a workflow to set this up post, -log uh, post the device build and when the user logs out. Um, next up, we've got um, the software updates, we spoke a little bit about these previously, but software updates on macOS devices can be um, automatically done via Microsoft Intune and using declarative device management, you can specify a date and time where you would like a device to be on a certain version by, um, which will allow the user to pre-check for updates and do that in the time that suits them, or by the time it reaches that um, deadline, it will automatically perform the software update. And then one of the key things that I think is important to deploy to all macOS devices is Gatekeeper settings. And Gatekeeper allows you to limit um, where applications can be installed from. So there's a couple of settings that you've got. So you've got the obviously not configured setting where you allow applications from anywhere to be installed. You've got um, Mac OS Store only, or you've got Mac OS Store plus any identified developers with a, certificate, uh, a Mac OS development certificate. And again, this is key to ensuring that applications that are installed on your devices are not riddled with malware. Okay, so how do we prepare our devices uh, how do we prepare our organization for managing these Mac OS devices? So the first thing you've got to do is know your options. So there is a few ways that you can uh, enroll Mac OS devices. So you've got um, Apple Business Manager and Apple School Manager, which you can use your enrollment tokens with to configure automated device enrollment. And this is the best way to configure your devices uh, and have them um, follow the steps that you want them to do to get that device onboarded. And it also allows you to tailor the out of box experience and configure the screens that are visible to the end user. Then we've got the single sign on setup and experience, which we're going to show you in a few moments. Um, there is a couple of things that we can do for the single sign-on experience. So the two solutions that are, are mainly used are Secure Enclave and Password. Now, the difference between them is the Secure Enclave can be used as a pass key, um, MFA for setup for application setups, um, the, and it does not change the local password on the macOS device. So the device, when it's set up, the local password will stay the same and it will not stay in sync with your entry password. But once you log in, it'll work like Windows Hello for Business where it uses that as a, as a second trusted factor, um, as a pass key uh, to be able to log in to different systems. And then password. So the 
password is not the password method is not able to be used as a uh, a passkey. Um, Touch ID is still supported, and this one will change the local password and keep it in sync with the user's enter ID password. Um, but each time um, the password reset, the password is reset on the device. But the user will need to keep two sets of passwords because they'll still need their local password for unlocking file vault if they ever need to. And then the the second the final options on this slide. So we've got compliance policies um, to ensure that things like file vault, stealth mode, uh, and certain software updates are in place. Um, if anybody is managing Macs today and has upgraded to Mac OS 15, you will know there is some issues at the moment with the compliance policies, where stealth mode is not not uh, is not recognised. Um, but it is still important to ensure these devices are compliant for what your organization needs, um, which can then be coupled with the conditional access policies to ensure that you control access to your data. Up next, we've got the app readiness. Um, we need to ensure that your apps are compatible um, with macOS. Now, most applications these days are generally going SaaS based, so a lot of them are accessed via the web browser. But any applications that your business uses, that your um, end user will need to use, it's important to ensure that they are compatible with macOS. Um, and when you're packaging apps for macOS, it is also important to be aware that in Windows, you generally package up the application, amend the registry. Uh, and things like that, and that's great. You could configure all them settings as the admin. On macOS, there is still certain um, steps that the user might have to take. For example, allowing screen recording, but you have to configure a policy to allow the user to allow the application for screen recording. So there's additional steps that you have to consider when you're managing these devices to ensure that the user gets the best experience um, when it's delivered to them. We've spoke a little bit about updates and support policies already, so I won't go over them again. Um, but there is one important thing to mention that uh, Microsoft is committed to providing day zero support for the latest um, major releases uh, on both iOS, iPadOS and macOS devices. We then also have the, the support readiness side of things, so just making sure really that the support teams are very kind of familiar with the configuration sets and the policies that have been created within Intune to support the management of those Mac devices. And just kind of really echoing David's point there as to in the same way that we manage Windows devices today within Intune, we still need to plan to ensure that any critical patches are released to the devices, um, whether they are, say, Windows-based or macOS-based, and more recently, the introduction of those um, zero-day um, updates as well. Um, when it comes to things like changes and naturally um, moving from, say, one version of Windows 10 to the next and now into Windows 11, in a similar way, we would still need to support end users with things like communication plans, ensuring that we notify the end users of any changes or any sets of instructions of how to enroll their, say, Mac OS device into Intune and how to manage maybe some of the tools that are now available to them, such as Company Portal. But um, David will be able to demo that shortly um, within the demo. Thanks, Ricky. So up next, we're just going to show a brief enrollment of um, how the um, Apple at the Apple device enrollment works, and then how we configure platform SSO on a device. This is a pre-recorded demo um, because trying to capture this live um, is not easy. Um, so we pre-recorded the demo to ensure that you see the full steps it takes to configure and enroll a device. So obviously these are your general general setup screens where you go through and connect it to your network. Um, and then you'll be prompted to enroll this into your um, MDM solution where you will enter your credentials. Uh, so in this case, I'm entering my own credentials and that's going to enroll this 
uh, into Intune. The prerequisite of this is the user will have to have that Intune license again. And then you can see that this device will now go through and pull down the configuration settings. It's important to know that on this device, I have a wait final config. So it will ensure that all the configuration policies assigned to this device are installed before continuing to the next stage. Um, I have sped it up a little bit here because I didn't think you wanted to sit around and watch this for five minutes. Um, so we have put speed ups in place in certain places um, just to ensure that we was able to cover the entire content. So again, you can see here, there's a very cut down experience um, of the um, enrollment. You can see I've only allowed two screens there. And that again, gets your users up and running quickly and prevents them having to select options that um, either A, you're gonna disable in the settings later, or B, um, they can configure later in the settings. It's all about guiding them through to getting the device up and running as quick as possible. As you saw there, we got a notification from the company portal to say that registration is required. And this is again for platform SSO. Um, at the moment, you need to present admin credentials and then log in with your Microsoft 365 details. And then there is one final step to complete to ensure that your device is then configured for platform SSO and to be able to use your device as a passkey to sign into these applications. So you can see here, it's just prompting that we need to go and allow Entra ID to autofill passwords. So in the settings, we go and configure that on, and then you will see a message to say that your device is successfully registered for platform SSO. And now you'll be able to go use things like Microsoft Edge, Teams, et cetera, and your device will be able to be used as that pass key to be able to sign you into them, device, uh, into them applications. So let's look at some of the limitations. So Intune has come a long way um, in its journey to managing macOS devices. Um, it's starting to nip at the heels of applications and solutions like Jamf. Um, is it's trying to get more feature parity with between windows and the mac os features um with more granular controls over the security app management app updates etc but this is where then we can use them community tools which we spoke about previously um to fill some of these gaps for the time being and again microsoft are um, on board with using these community tools um, there is a few Microsoft blogs um, about these tools uh, and how you can get them configured to work with Intune. And then application deployments. So at the moment, package and DNG files are supported in Intune. Um, Jamf is still um, ahead of the game in terms of providing its own app catalog where you can go download these um, applications from and deploy them. Um, and with Intune, you may have to look at third party solutions um, like Route 3 or other developers that have got things in the pipeline for managing them updates. Perfect. So we'll move on to Q&A. I've just seen a question um, come into the chat from um, Kevin. What if the user does not have an admin account on the Mac? I in in honest opinion i'm not right sure and i'm not sure um i can take that away and then provide feedback on that um i will go remove admin rights from uh, a user um, on a virtual machine and provide that information um there is solutions as i mentioned before things like admin by request or privileges um, where you can do just in time admin approval which may be able to satisfy um 
those those requirements. Um, but I will come back to you with some information or if the user is not an admin on the device. Perfect. And I think there's a couple of other um, questions that we got just before the, um, the the webinar started. I don't know if you've got them to hand, David. Yeah. So one question that we that I receive all the time and we, we, we got asked as well before the webinar is how do you test things on a Mac OS when you've only got sort of one Mac device in your um, IT department? And the answer is you can use something called UTM and you can download a, an IPSW file and you can create a virtual Mac and enroll that Mac device to be able to be managed um, via Intune and you can push all your policies, security and everything there. Uh, and it also works great if you just want a second device um, on there that's for another tenant, for example, for any MSPs out there that have multiple clients, they can do the same thing for them as well. Is there any other questions from anybody else? It's got another one come through, David. Um, so it says, um, with UTM, can you virtualize the serial number? Yes, the serial number is completely virtualized. Um, just another one that's come through as well. So how easy is it to set up single sign-on? Um, it's very easy to set up single sign-on. The, the documentation um, from Microsoft, some of the steps are um, misleading and lead you to not have it configured correctly. Um, but there is a few blogs out there which show you how to configure it co uh, correctly with the settings catalogue. Um, but it is very simple to configure in terms of deploying the um, settings catalog profile and then the user will just be prompted to sign up to do the SSO with a registration notification. And then we've got um, another one here. So e are each of the community extensions an additional cost? So with the community tools, most of them are free and most of them have free options. So I know Octary has a pro SKU for different, uh, for some additional pieces, but to give you the seamless experience, you don't need a uh, pro SKU. Um, community tools are generally free uh, and most of them are downloadable just from GitHub. Um, I think we, we will be able to send out some information. Uh, we'll be able to send out a list of the tools that we've spoke about. Um, and you'll be able to to research them and uh, have a look at them. But yes, they all have free options um, to allow you to manage your devices better. Perfect. Um, if there is any other questions, feel free to um, pop them across to us in, in the chat. But what we'd really like to know um, is what you would like to see next. And, and that could be more inching webinars, maybe um, components in regards to Windows 11 migration planning, areas within maybe security involving things like Defender, um, and that could be Defender for Endpoint, Identity, and, and the rest. Or if there's a certain kind of topic of interest, um, then feel free to um, pop it into the chat or um, follow up um, with some of the information that we'll send out to you. But just some um, re useful information. If you do need any assistance with Intune, feel free to either message us in the chat or if you want to speak to us directly after today's session, we will be sending out an email and simply um, just hit reply and, uh, and ask us anything that you require. Um, but really from both myself and David, um, thank you very much for joining us today um, and we will be sending out the recording within the next 24 hours. Feel free to share it um, with any um, members of the team that were not able to join today's session and then we'll also follow up with any kind of um, useful resources and links that David mentioned in regards to some of those community tools uh, and again just that recording of um, today's session. But um, Thank you very much for joining. Thank you.